Hallo, mein Name ist Roberto Scobo, ich bin Student Partner und wer bist du? Stell dich mal kurz vor. Guten Tag, ich heiße, mein Name ist Don Zeim, ich bin Architekt und Designer für, für F-Sharp. Ich bin auch in ich arbeite für Microsoft Research in, in, in Cambridge in England und wir sind jetzt hier in TechEd Europe in Berlin und wir haben ja Chris Diaz, der Demigod von den Visual, <lacht> der Hardgod von Visual Studio und er ist von Visual Basic und andere, andere and Visual Studio Core, the Editor und other ganz besonders Stücke von dem Visual Studio Product und auch ähm, Lucien Wieschick, der Meister, der, Meis, der, der Language Chef für Visual Basic. Ja. Okay, danke. Ähm, wir setzen das dann ganz normal in Englisch fort, dass die anderen auch verstehen, äh, was so äh, los ist. Um, can you explain me what you are doing um, the whole day uh, if you are not at a tech ad? Uh, when I'm not at TechEd. So uh, my job is to, uh, in a sense, uh, the, the designer, the, the owner of the F-Sharp language, in a sense, the one who um, owns the architecture of the language, makes the key, key design decisions about what we sort of do and don't do at the design level. And I work a lot in cooperation with the Visual Studio team, Uh, with, with Chris and uh, tangentially with Lucien and his team in C-Sharp and Visual Basic as we set the direction for the designs of the, the .NET family of languages, F-Sharp in particular for me and the others as well. Ask, um, I want to ask, um, can you uh, say me the difference between C-Sharp and F-Sharp? Um, I think people don't, just don't uh, know what F-Sharp should be. Sure. The... Uh, the the C sharp and F sharp and Visual Basic are all, in a sense, a, a closely related family of languages, and they work extremely well together. But they have their uh, the key focuses and, and uh, that, that kind of differentiate them. Uh, the key focus for F sharp is to be a, a, a functional programming language, a functional first language. C sharp, of, also, of course, also has a functional programming kind of mode. And especially in its link, uh, the, the, the link subset of the C sharp language. And in the sense, F sharp is about making that the primary mode in which you do your programming. Mm -hmm. Is to sort of take the if for those who are watching who have used link, uh, imagine doing that as sort of your primary mode of programming through the whole the whole of the programming experience. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you for first. Um, You don't have much I time. Have uh, I, <laughs> I have to apologize for all the mistakes I made in the German at the beginning. So it was an attempt. I think there were no mistakes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Um, okay, um, I go on with you. Um, we did uh, hear something about F sharp and um, C sharp. You all know. Um, could it be that there's uh, new technology anywhere? Uh, perhaps you could tell me. Yeah, actually, um, 12 days ago at PDC. We announced a new technology in Visual Basic and C-Sharp. It's not really new because it was in F-Sharp already and it shipped in F-Sharp. And that's a common pattern that people who know F-Sharp already kind of see into the future of what the other languages are picking up. But the new technology, it's really exciting, right? For everyone who's used any application in Windows, they click a button, it waits for the internet, and they get the circle of death while they're waiting for it and the entire application freezes. The reason that happens is because all kinds of programs now do things over the internet. They take a long time to complete. It is possible to write programs that don't freeze during these operations, but it's just been very difficult to write them. The new technology we've introduced will make it a lot easier to write uh, the kinds of programs that remain responsive, and also it will allow hopefully web servers to perform faster and more efficiently. Um, but uh, the problem of the circle of death is um, mainly um, in itself. Um, if you have um, tasks to, for example, uh, to parallel programming uh, um, um, algorithm, um, you can't do anything uh, parallel. Uh, you know the problem. Uh, the same is um, if you need data to go further on from the web, um, There is a circle of death. Uh, how do you want to manage that? Sure. We can't change the laws of physics. 
And when you're downloading a file from the internet, it's limited by the speed of light, and we can't change that. What we can change is make it easier to let programmers write programs where the buttons and windows stay responsive while it's waiting. So they can show a progress dialog that's more useful rather than becoming completely dead. Okay. Uh, and thinking that the application is not running anymore and uh, not responding. Absolutely, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, do you, when do you think will this uh, technology come to the customers, or is it already? Well, uh, 12 days ago, we released the uh, community technology preview. Everyone can download it for VB and C Sharp. Mm -hmm. And if people are using Visual Studio 2010, which was already released, then they've already been using this technology in F Sharp. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, if you're talking about Visual Studio, uh, I think you know something about that. Uh, could you explain to us um, what would be the future? Um, would be his technology integrated into Visual Studio, or how could we imagine what will happen in the future? Uh, so the future of Visual Studio um, is a lot about... There, there's two aspects of it. There's the core of Visual Studio, which we will continue to, to modernize and bring forward and, and move to the latest technologies at like WPF and things like that. Um, and in that space, there's a lot of work that we're doing around developer productivity and how we can make it easier for developers to write and consume applications that take advantage of all the, the great features in the language like, like async and iterators that, that Lucian's also been introducing into VB. And so the more that we can take Visual Studio and make it so that it's quick and easy and fluid to write these applications and then understand the complexities of the system in a much easier and a simpler way um, is where we're taking Visual Studio, as sort of the core part of, of the product itself. And you can also think about um, you know, the proliferation of services that are going to be available and then integrating and connecting Visual Studio to sets of services that, uh, that you know, sort of tie your whole experience together, not only locally, but collectively. Can you give some, uh, a few examples uh, for the integration you uh, mentioned? Um, is it SharePoint, is it uh, BBOS, or perhaps, I don't know. Um, um, the, you, is Visual Studio um, using web services in the future, or more or less? I think we'll see Visual Studio using more services in the future. Um, at the PDC 12 days ago, I think Brian Harry announced and talked about uh, Team Foundation Server in the cloud as a service. And you can imagine at some point that you know, there'll be a, a rich connection between Visual Studio. and So you can have your on-premise Team Foundation experience, um, or you could subscribe to a cloud service, and then you could connect you know, remotely. So if you have a distributed team, or if you have a set of partners that you're working with, if you're a small company, um, you can still interact with Team Foundation in the cloud straight from Visual Studio as you can today if it's on-premise or something like that. So you'll start to see more things like that. 